You really think this is going to work? Richard, with you I am rarely certain of anything. However, yes, I believe that it will. So do we just wait for her to turn up? More or less. I was rather assuming that you had a game review to do. I suppose I do. You'll keep an eye out, right? I shall. Alright then. Hello and welcome to the 100th episode of Let's Review. We've seen a lot in these past couple of years. Evils that want to conquer the world, to high school drama in an all-girls school. We've seen some truly excellent games, and then we've seen things like the Sakura games, which kind of made me want to kill myself. But for this milestone, I think it's time to once again look at a staple of this channel, a Sunrider game. Specifically, today we're going to be looking at the free DLC for Sunrider Liberation Day. Can this new edition make up for what many saw as the flaws in the main game? Well, to answer that, we start as we always do, with the gameplay. Unusually for a Sunrider game, this DLC does not feature any of the usual space combat gameplay. While this does make perfect sense given the plot presented here, it is a little disappointing, if only because the gameplay of Sunrider games is usually so damn enjoyable. Given the limitations of the story, however, it does make complete sense, but it does mean that the story itself has to be the thing that supports this DLC entirely on its own. And can it do that? Well... The story of Return centres around several major events from the end of Liberation Day, and as such, there will be spoilers for that game in this review. You should consider yourselves warned. Return follows our old friend, Captain Kato Shields, as he wakes up in a truly terrifying position, with Claude in his bed. Oh, the horror, the horror. The reason for this soon becomes clear. Kato is now a time traveller. For reasons of her own, Claude has sent him back in time, about three days or so, in order to prevent the Liberation Day massacre and the events that ended the main game of Liberation Day. The downside of this is that there's now two Kato shields running around the ship, and the other one's probably not going to believe this story, at least not in time. As such, Kato must work undercover in order to prevent the massacre from happening by changing the past. And I'll be honest, this time, your choices matter. Actually matter, or matter in the sense of changing one person's hairstyle? Matters in the sense of having about 20 different endings, and they can range on the scale from really kind of excessively happy, to freezing to death in a corridor and failing miserably. There are also now romance options. Early on in the DLC, you're asked to pick which one of four crew members will assist you in completing your mission. And if you succeed on getting the happy ending, you'll end up with a romance option there. If you've pulled down the desensor patch as well, which I have now done, you also get a full-on sex scene with them, which are about on par with the ones in Sunrider Academy. You mean the ones that YouTube felt were far too sexy to be allowed? Yep. A lot of this feels like a reaction to the criticism that Liberation Day received. Choices that matter, more character options and romance options, more interaction with the members of your crew, and a script that's apparently longer than the previous Sunrider games, barring Academy, put together. All of this is definitely in the DLC's favour. The one issue I have is that I can't see it affecting the next main game at all. It feels like a story that's taking place in its own little separate universe, which does make sense given the nature of the plot, but it does mean that I can't actually see it having any impact going forward. It's just a fun little what-if story. Does that not limit its impact? To a certain extent, yes. And I think if they charged money for it, I might have been a little disappointed. 
but as a free piece of DLC that's clearly meant as an apology to those who are disappointed, I can't really fault it. It fleshes out a lot of interesting bits and pieces, gives us a fun what-if scenario, ties Academy into the main series a little bit more, and gives a small backstory on Claude, who, incidentally, is definitely perverted Q. And now I'm imagining John Delancey with long pink hair. I can't decide if that's horrible or brilliant. Return is a fun little addition to the main game of Sunrider, and that's honestly all it is. While it's not massively long, each run will take you about two, two and a half hours, there is enough variation and you can see enough different things on repeat playthroughs that it's definitely a good little addition to the game, especially given that it is free. As I said before, if they charged for it, it might have been a little disappointing, but as a free little fun what-if story, it's a good solid addition. It definitely doesn't sell the game on its own, but if you're already a fan of the Sunrider games, it's definitely worth a go. For the most part, the art is exactly the same as that of Liberation Day, which means it's actually really rather good. The only real disappointment with it is that there are very, very few new CGs. If you're playing without the D-Center patch, there's actually only one. And if you do have the patch, there are only an additional five, one for each of the romance options. I freely appreciate, given the free nature of this DLC, why we don't have many new CGs, but it would have been nice to see some, especially for moments that crop up in multiple routes, like, for example, Claude with a rocket launcher. Again, I totally get why we don't have new ones, but I think it would have been nice to see. The music is pretty good for the most part, although it does have this habit of fading into the background quite a lot, so you don't really notice it that much. The sound effects likewise are pretty good, but since we've got no real combat gameplay, you don't tend to hear them all that often, so they don't have that much of an impact. There's also no voice acting, which means that overall the audio is perfectly fine, but nothing really exceptional. So, did I enjoy Sunrider Liberation Day Return? Yes, I did. Should you buy it? That's kind of a dumb question to ask in relation to a piece of free DLC, if I'm honest. But honestly, I can say yes. I mean, does it sell Liberation Day on its own? No, absolutely not. But given that I already thought Liberation Day was worth getting despite its flaws, this is a good, solid addition that adds an interesting what-if story and does some slightly different things with it. But the most important thing about this is it shows that Love and Space are willing to listen to their critics, accept what works and what doesn't, and take the feedback. And that is an important aspect. If they can apply what they've learned here to the next game in the series, I think we could be in for something really, really good. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some property that I need to get back. I'll see you later. Most people knock, you know. Hi. Have a seat. Why am I back here? Yeah, sorry, you can uh, blame Martin for that. It's that ring of his. Apparently it emits some sort of psychic beacon and draws people in. You use mind control on me? Oh, nothing that unsubtle. It's more of a vague suggestion. In fact, according to Martin, wouldn't work at all if you didn't want to come back. Which means either you came back because on some level you feel guilty for taking my knife, or you realise that if you don't kill me, I'll pursue you for as long as it takes. Even if that is what I think it is. So, do you recognise it? 
There's only 43 of them in existence. Of course I recognise it. Admittedly, the last time anyone saw Starlight, it was being carried out of Japan by a Ronin. No idea who, whose name was never remembered by history. Where exactly did you find it? I found it in Seal. I was asked by my supervisor to watch some youngest students at a dig site there. I decided to stay back after they'd all gone home one evening. And, well, it felt like something was calling to me. The students must have missed it by millimetres. I really should have handed it in. It's a fantastic find, but I don't know why I kept it. I decided to look into it, and that's what led me to the Victorian dig site. What led me to you? So what you told me before was actually the truth, then? Mostly. I mean, it's easier than coming up with a lie. Guess that just leaves us with one question, then. Why exactly did you take Talon? Why? <laughs> because you're wasting it. I beg your pardon? That dagger has created some of the greatest weapons we have ever seen. I mean, you keep it in a drawer in your kitchen, for God's sake. Those weapons have been a beacon of light for centuries. Imagine how bright they would shine with 50 or even a 100 more. <laughs> Very poetic. And who exactly are you planning on killing in order to make them? You can't possibly think the world will be short of volunteers. There's thousands of people who want to make the world better. Not by dying for it. Most people just aren't that selfless. <sighs> wow. <laughs> you really have a grim view on humanity. There's hundreds of people risk their lives to help others every day. Yeah, they risk. And even in the certain knowledge that they will almost certainly die, they still have hope. Talon takes that away. Every time somebody goes under it, they know with absolute certainty that they will die. And at the last moment, they don't have hope. And I, I will not allow that. You're a coward. You don't care about those other people. You care about your own personal sensibilities. You just don't want to bear the burden of taking someone else's life. Too bloody right I don't. And if that makes me a coward, then yeah, I'm a coward. But in a choice between being a coward and a murderer, I'd take coward any day of the week. Then let me take talent. Pass on the responsibility to me. Give it to someone who's willing to make the hard choices. I have no idea how tempting that is, but I can't. I won't step aside and allow you to do something that I know is wrong. So what does that mean? That I can't let you leave. Not unless you're willing to hand over Talon. And I can't leave without it. Look, I don't want to fight you. And I... I have no desire to kill you. You're a little arrogant, aren't you? How do you know I'll lose? Simple. I have the experience in combat. I have the advantage in armour. And most importantly of all, I cheat. I would strongly advise placing your weapons on the ground very carefully. Martin. You get it? That I did. I apologise for the necessity of breaking the glass on your car. I would advise you to be rather careful of it for a time. So you were distracting me? No, I was trying to convince you. But when you have access to a soul shard with a gun, take advantage of him. So, what are you going to do with me? Nothing. You're free to go. But you are leaving behind Talon, Starlight, and my spare door keys. <sighs> Thank you.
the record, if I see you again, I may well shoot you. You would, wouldn't you? He wouldn't, but you would. Goodbye. Hope to see you again. So, what exactly are you planning on doing with Starlight? I'll give it back to her. I'm sorry? When she's ready for it. It shows her, saw something in her, and honestly, I see it too. And besides, she was right about one thing. The world's gonna need all the nights it can get. Lunch?